Hi, I'm John, the money engineer, Termel. And a Brit named Neil Ferguson has done a book called The Ascent of Money. It's now a series on PBS. I caught it two hours earlier this week. And that same night, he was on the Colbert Report streaming a whole bunch of bullshit to poor Stephen, who shouldn't know any better. So we're going to do an analysis of Stephen's show, see where Ferguson gives him a lot of bull, and explain how the mistakes are happening. Welcome back, everybody. My guest tonight has written a financial history of the world. I'll ask him what I can learn from him that I can't learn from the guy with the question mark suit. Please welcome Neil Ferguson. All right, now let's get right to it. You got a book here called The Ascent of Money. All right, it's a financial history of the world. Okay, I'll bite. What is money? Okay, <laughs> all I know is that I got a lot of it. All right. <laughs> Can I eat it? Can I eat money? No, don't try Can I that. eat money? Can I have sex with it? Can no, I sex with don't try that either. Okay, that but won't it's tempting. Work. I mean, you it's could very try. Tempting. I mean, this is, obviously, this is money. You've probably seen that before. Yeah, that's, that's George Washington. That's yeah. a, that's well, a dollar bill. you could have sex with him, but he's dead. Yep. So I, 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 <laughs> now, before he tries to answer what is money, I'm going to give you the simplest explanation of what money really is. It is a receipt for collateral. It is a receipt for something. It is an IOU, but from now on, I'm going to talk about it as a poker chip. Because if you think in terms of poker chips, you'll get to understand all the misconceptions about people who think in terms of mammon, money, who've been hypnotized into their errors. All right, think, think, go of, ahead. think of money this way, okay. Stephen. Don't forget to give me that back at the I end. I will not forget. Uh, it, it is a means of exchange, so you can exchange it for whatever you want. And it's a unit of account, so you can count up how much money you have in terms of dollars. But I prefer to think of it as a relationship. It's a relationship between a creditor and a debtor. I say IOU, he says relationship. I think my definition IOU on a piece of paper is better than his definition relationship because he hasn't put it on a piece of paper yet. Between somebody who lends money and somebody who borrows it. And it doesn't need to take that form. It doesn't need to be a bit of paper. Wait a second, we're having a problem right now. No one will lend anybody right. money. Yeah. So doesn't that mean so that there is no money? Well, <laughs> if no one will yeah. lend well, money, then money itself doesn't exist by your logic. Okay, he comes close by saying money does not exist without that relationship. But money cannot come into existence without that relationship. There's a difference. Well, in some ways that's true because a lot of money doesn't take that form at all. It's in banks, and it's invisible. Is he saying electronic charge is invisible? Is he saying that a credit in my account is invisible? About half the money supply. Invisible money? It is invisible. It is. How do you know if someone steals it? So, so well, this is the point, because money relies heavily on trust. That's why the word credit has its roots okay, so in the word. I, I, I like money, but I don't like trusting people. Yeah, but you see, you try. <laughs> but, Stephen, you trust your bank. And it tells you, I don't know how much money you've got in the bank, but it tells you it's there. But I have bad news for you, it's not. Most of it is not there. They've lent it to other people. Of course, we know that if you study the bank plumbing, like the governor of the Bank of Canada, Graham Towers, said in 1939, the banks, of course, do not lend out their depositors' funds. So, obviously, Ferguson is completely wrong. He thinks it operates like a piggy bank. He isn't aware it operates like a casino bank issuing new money. So, he's a believer in the double think that the money's coming out of the tap and coming out of the reservoir at the same time. You see, okay, can I get so, it back? Well, yes, you probably can. But if everybody asks for their money back at once from the bank, then there'll be a problem. Well, not everybody. I just yeah. need money. Yeah, back. you're fine. So if you want money out of the bank, you take your little plastic card, mm -hmm. you go to a hole in the wall. Yeah. At that point, the money's not visible. It only mm -hmm. becomes Wait, visible. Wait, are, are you at a, uh, a gay porn shop? What about a hole in the wall are you talking about? <laughs> so we, you call them ATMs. Yes, yes, I'm one yes. of the hated British. Yes, yes, so yes. Do you hear me squirrel, the wall. by the way? Never. Never? OK. Never. Good to hear. No, but All I'll right. try. OK. I'll try if you insist. Mm -hmm. nope. So the point, the point I'm trying to make, Stephen, is that most money isn't actually visible. When we talk about the money supply, this is only a fraction of it. The banknotes are only a fraction of it. Most of it is in bank accounts, not visible. And the truth is, it's what about not gold? Better. What about gold? Yeah. Like, is it, what about like Fort Knox? Yeah. Is this backed up by anything? Well, is this, is this, no. does this represent gold? No, not since the early 1970s. 
So this why, is, why, is, this it, is, why is it worth anything? Because you believe it is. Because, <laughs> well, really, it's credit. It's, it's your belief in that signature. It says Henry Paulson. He's the Treasury Secretary, not for much longer. <laughs> and and Wait, yes. listen, it says, this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. And you believe that. And so do the people who accept these notes when you pay for things. That's how money works. It's basically trust. Well, we know that all money is created by banks. And you can't get any unless you put up collateral as the basis for that money. So that your money is not backed up by trust, like Professor Ferguson is trying to tell us, it's backed up by the collateral that's been pledged at the banks. So they keep forgetting that the collateral is pledged at the bank, and anytime they see new money, they go, inflation, because they figure it's unbacked money. But nobody gets unbacked money that I know of, except bankers. This is actually intrinsically only worth a few cents. It's just a little piece of paper. But you believe in it. And so do the people who accept this money. I believe in little else. Yes. Right, this $500 chip from Casino Branford is just worth a few pennies to create. But it's only worth the trust behind it? Well, no. It's worth the $500 pledged in the cage to get it. That's how chips come into circulation in a casino and in the economy. Economists forget. But do you, you know what? But well, speaking of which, but Jesus, right. Jesus said... Yeah. Jesus said money is the root of all evil. No, he didn't. You... No, he didn't. He said, Stephen, the love of money is the root of all evil. All right. And why would the love of chips be so evil? The root of all evil, the love of chips. Ah, because their chips have babies and grow. And that's why they love their pile of chips. But if it was real chips with no interest, you wouldn't love your chips. The love of money would not be a problem. So it's the usury on the tokens that makes the love of money a problem. Right, but he also Very said different. you cannot serve both God and money. That is true. Okay, you will hate one and yeah. love the other. So in the history of money, which is what you're going over here, where are we on the love God, love money scale right now? <laughs> I, I, I have a sense that we love money a little less than we used to. Very often in times of financial crisis, when banks fail and our trust in money diminishes, you'll see a re religious revival. It's one of the regular patterns. Is that why it says, right. in God we trust? It's interesting, isn't it? That is it that says why it says that? that? Why does it, it say is that? Interesting because that it because says the, that. the American money is designed to have some kind of aura of trustworthiness in it. So you have George Washington on one side. Not only does it say, in God we trust, but there's a wonderful pyramid on the back with an all-seeing eye. Which yes. is quite extraordinary when you come to think of it. I mean, why is that there? It's the great seal of the United States. Well, because States. the founding fathers were all right. Masons. That's right. <laughs> and that the, that uh, the Illuminati all... controlled right. the world monetary. But... Wow, so Stephen knows about the Illuminati. Just one of the secret societies used by bankers to control the world so that the rich guys stay rich and the poor guys stay poor. Did you find out about the Illuminati in your book? Where, when did they kick in so controlling everything? They, they don't. But one of the interesting things about this money, which we all believe in, is that it constantly depreciates in value. What I mean, mean, this is worth, a, a dollar bill is worth today about 13% of what it was worth in 1959 because of inflation. So this thing buys less and less over time, but we still believe in it. Well, it because can, I suppose can, we what can, can anything be money? Because yeah. before there were dollar yeah. bills, what was money? It can be anything. Enorm anything? Enormous. Could I be money? Am I money? <laughs> well, Am I money? I guess it's true you can make poker chips out of anything, and you can also, I suppose, deal in slaves, so maybe people could have been money. Stephen, if, any, if people will accept you as payment for goods, then you are money. <laughs> wow. Anything can be money. Large round rocks are money on the island of Yap. Cigarettes were money at the end of World War II in Berlin. Anything be money. Cigarettes are money in accept. prison. Right. <laughs> yeah. I did a little hard time, which I'm is why I have such that. street cred with the kids. <laughs> I didn't know that. I'll bear that in mind. Now, th this, 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 this book is also a, a series on PBS, right? That's right. Well, w why on PBS? They don't know anything about money. I know. <laughs> they pay for those doo-wop concerts with sacks of chestnuts. <laughs> So they're the poorest people in the world. I know. I, being, being a squirrel-eating Briton, I assumed that they had money, like the BBC. No, no, no. So the BBC nothing. has money. The BBC no, gets, the, the no. gets, gets the tax. No, no, they, 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 no. they barter with belly button lint. No, it's, it's true. <laughs> it's true. It's well, the, the they, book and the series is called The Ascent of Money. My guest is Neil Ferguson. Thank you so much for joining. <laughs> Good luck on getting some money. We'll be right back.
So if you want a lesson on how the money system works like a piggy bank when we know it doesn't, watch The Ascent of Money on PBS. Error brought to you on a class station. Class error.